Hello. Professor. Medish. Welcome to Propeller. Design. What or what? My name is Kwang Liu. My name is Wen Si Peng. I'm Yang Gan. I'm Si Han. Our target is to have a propeller have maximum efficiency rotating at 9,000 RPM and have a static thrust rotating at 5,000 RPM equals to 0.2 Newton. According to the blade element theory, our efficiency is, re, uh, is given as this equation and our thrust is given as this equation. B represents the number of the propeller blades, which is two. There are three parameters we need to design for our propeller. The first is the cross-section geometry, which is the Nakai airfoil shape. The, the, the second is the pitch angle. And the third is the chord length. With these three parameters defined, we can have our efficiency and thrust calculated. In order to complete these two targets, there are five unknowns in the equation, which is the rotation speed of the air, the angle of attack, the, this, uh, these three requires the geometry of the airflow. In order to solve these five unknowns, we have a five equation of systems. We have a five equation of systems. The first one is energy conservation. The second one is momentum conservation. And these three comes from the geometry of the velocity triangle. With all these unknowns solved by numerical method, we can calculate our efficiency and our thrust at our desired conditions. Any questions? Yes, Professor Yang, I have a question. Yes. So how do we get DD or DL? Good question! Are you stupid or something? If we know the airfoil profile, we can obtain a plot of C over CD versus alpha with any Naka airfoil from X foil. We are interested in the linear section of the graph. So with no airfoil profile, we can calculate any CL over CD by calculating the slope here times alpha. Now Guang is gonna talk about the implementations of these equations. Now I will introduce the design process for our propeller. Globally, we have two equations, which is the maximum efficiency and the static thrust. But the parameter we have to decide here are three. So two equations, three parameters, we have infinitely many of solutions. Therefore, in order to solve this problem, we got to fix a parameter. And the parameter we choose to fix here is the Nakafoyo shape of the cross-section. We choose it to be Naka018. We also defined the angle of attack alpha. The angle of attack alpha we choose is the value that provided the maximum lift to drag ratio. With these two input and the moment equation and the velocity triangle, we iterate the twist angle phi using the process stated by the flowchart here to optimize the efficiency at 9,000 RPM. Then we use the decided cross-section Naka foil shape and the twist angle phi and we iterate the coordinate C for using all the five equations stated by Mr. Yang to get the static thrust at 5,000 RPM. We make that value equals to 0.2 Newton to get the coordinates at each segment of our propeller. After these two process, we finish the design. With these three parameters decided, we get the final shape of our propeller. So, let's see how our propeller performed during the test. The first, I got a bad feeling about this. The first, the total weight of our propeller. We got some pretty small mass, so it's about 2.08 gram. <laughs> Uh, and the thrust at 5,000 RPM, well, it's really amazing, I think. So it's about 0 0.065 Newton. Yeah, about 30%. Yeah, really amazing. It's even lower than the midterm average. Good morning. Today, I'm very proud of myself. So for the maximum efficiency, first, let's guess where the maximum efficiency occurs. It's at about 4,000 RPM, not myself. And the maximum efficiency is about 31%. Still, 
is lower than the midterm average. At 9,000 RPM, the efficiency is about 16%. Well, I hope this is higher than the uh, final <laughs> average. Well, hopefully. Really amazing result. At least uh, there's some obvious mistake in our method. So I guess there can be some improvement. If you look back to our original design process, there is actually some mistake. A problem actually happened here. It doesn't make sense to have a fixed alpha to calculate the twist angle. In order to improve this process, we need to consider the efficiency and thrust together. Remember that when we did the optimization, we wanted to maximize the efficiency but we did not consider anything about the thrust at that time. Now, in order to introduce the thrust into this formula, we need to add another constraint. We firstly define the thrust distribution along the blade by defining a spline. With this spline, we can get the local thrust at any cross-section. So we plug in this local thrust into this equation, and it will be our constraint. This new optimization process is detailedly shown in our report. So if you want to know more about this, just look at the report. This is the end of our lecture today. Please don't forget to fill up your course evaluation. Thank you for watching. See you next semester.